from the Credit Union National Association. This is the CUNA News Podcast. Credit Union people. Credit Union ideas. Welcome to the CUNA News Podcast. I'm Associate Editor Brock Fritz, and I'll be taking you through this episode recognizing Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. We'll go back 80 years to World War II and U.S. internment camps. What happened to Japanese Americans when they were released from the camps? How were they treated by the financial world? We'll tell that story through the lens of National JACL Credit Union, a $39 million asset credit union in Salt Lake City that formed in 1943 to help interned Japanese Americans reassimilate and get financial services that other institutions wouldn't offer. National JACL Credit Union President and CEO, Dean Hirabayashi, joined the podcast to define the Japanese American Citizens League, explain why the credit union formed in Topaz internment camp, how Japanese Americans struggled to get loans and open savings accounts, and how the credit union continues serving Asian Americans in promoting the people helping people philosophy. Hirabayashi, a 38-year credit union professional, also discusses the importance of AAPI Heritage Month, diversity efforts within the credit union industry, where there is room to improve, the challenges of being a small credit union, and why he loves the credit union movement. So let's dive into it and recognize AAPI Heritage Month with Dean Hirabayashi and National JACL Credit Union. First, why don't you just introduce yourself? Of course, I'm Dean Hirabayashi, born and raised actually here in Utah and have been in the credit union field, gosh, let's see, 38 years now. Started a large credit union here in Utah, America First Credit Union. I'm sure you've heard of them. And worked for them for 21 years. And then had the opportunity to come to a much smaller credit union, this uh, National JCL Credit Union. I've been here now for 17 years. So i wow. um, pretty much been a credit union guy my whole life. <laughs> yeah, 38 years at two places. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually on the board of National JCL Credit Union for that. Just kind of give back some of my experience and knowledge with credit unions to this credit union. And so then got the opportunity to come and, and work here. But yeah, so I enjoyed it. It's a lot of work. Small credit unions, boy, I don't know, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but, you know, we do everything that large credit unions do but with a smaller staff. And so we all have to do everything, kind of a jack of all trades, every single one of us. Sure. What is your staff size? We have seven employees. Seven, okay. Yeah, you all get to know each other and how to do everything, I would assume. Yep, definitely, yeah. (laughs) We all just have the one branch and one office located here in Salt Lake. And our credit union, you know, we, most of our members are out of state, actually. Mm -hmm. So we have about between 30 to 35% of our membership here in Utah and another 30, maybe close to 35% again in California. And then the rest of our members are throughout the nation. So we do a lot of business electronically over the phone, just by nature of how the credit union got started. And, And so, so that's why we don't have most of our members here in Utah. How do you think members come across you? We're still fairly closed field of membership, associational. So we're part of the national JACL. And I, I'm sure in your research, JACL stands for Japanese American Citizens League. And that's a national civil rights organization for Japanese Americans. And so, so you know, through that organization as well, but mostly through family, you know, join our membership. We, we did open our membership up. Community-wise, gosh, it's been probably nine years ago now, maybe, okay. open to Salt Lake County. Um, but we do very little, if any, marketing outside of, you know, our, our association. Just because there's, in Utah, you know, we've got so many credit unions that we're highly competitive out here. Okay. <laughs> we've had some <laughs> some pretty big credit unions, a couple of very large credit unions yeah. out here. So it's a little tougher to compete in that area. But we try to maybe stay with our little niche that we've got, kind of the Asian community as well. Um, And so I'm quite involved in many different Asian communities out here. And uh, so we do a little bit of marketing and sponsorship, promotional stuff through that as well. So, 
Yeah. yeah. So I know you obviously weren't around when the credit union started, but in your understanding or your words, why did the National JACL Credit Union start? Yeah. So this is our 80th anniversary this year. There was a uh, camp, concentration camp or yeah. uh, internment camp down here in Utah, in central Utah. It's called Topaz in Delta, Utah. What happened was towards the middle and the end of the war, the government would allow some of the internees to leave the camp as long as they had a job. And so there were, you know, a few people started to leave the camps because they had opportunities outside and would go get a job. And they found that once they earned money, none of the banks, none of the other financial institutions would allow them to even put money in, the, in a savings account, let alone get a car loan or a home loan or anything for business. So there was a group of individuals in Topaz, in the camp, that you know heard about this and thought, you know, we need to try to do something. What can we do to help these individuals? And so they did some research and found this thing called a cooperative financial institution, and which is a credit union. And yep. so they decided to pull their money together and start a credit union and help those who needed a loan, you know, just help each other. So that's that's really how this, this credit union got started. And that's why we're we're headquartered here. People mm -hmm. always ask, you know, why not California? There's, you know, many more Japanese in, in California. But because they started in Topaz and the the people who really ran that credit union stayed here in Utah. So that's why we're we're located here. Yeah, that's a interesting story. And I didn't know about it. And I'm sure a lot of people are kind of unfamiliar with the whole mm -hmm. Japanese American story in general. Why is that time important to the Asian American community? And is there anything that we should know about it? You know, it probably brought together, you know, there's, you always try to look for the good in the sure. back, but it probably brought together a lot of the Japanese Americans. Well, it forced them to be together <laughs> physically. Sure. Yep. But because of that, you know, probably built a a bigger community amongst themselves, you know, in a broader geographical sense as well, because a lot of them stayed here in Utah. A lot of them went back to California. Others were moved around with other camps and had family members. And so, you know, really kind of expanded that that community sure. uh, because of that as well. And so you, you kind of look, you know, at that as a positive thing out of the negative. And so, yeah, that's kind of where my thoughts are. Are there other signs of things in the area other than the credit union or? Well, yeah, there's, you know, especially in Topaz. I mean, there's a there's an actual Topaz Museum down in, in the city of Delta. And, and that community has embraced that, you know, tremendously. So appreciate all of them down there. Um, there is another small camp in Moab that's down there. And there's a monument down there. You know, and, and the community here, it's not a large Japanese American community, but, you know, we have still some chapters, some JACL chapters here in, in Utah. There's three of them here in Utah. You know, we do a lot of activities just to teach cultural things sure. as well as, you know, every year in February, we kind of commemorate the signing of the document that the president signed to send everybody to camp. So, you know, we try to keep that up and and teach every, you know, one about that as well. And so, you know, just that maybe not a physical thing, but, you know, community-wise, we try to keep that history. How do the values of the credit union still show up today or the reasons that it were formed? How are they being used while you operate today? Well, I think, you know, it may be nothing different than any other credit union, really, yep. you know, members helping members. And so, you know, we, we tout that and, and kind of carry that philosophy forward, you know, with our members that, you know, not only is it a community thing helping each other, but, you know, on the financial situations as well. And so, you know, as far as, you know, I don't know about Asian history type thing, but I think sure. more of the credit union philosophy, we try to tie that into that as well. And then May is AAPI month. What does that mean to you when you hear it? Yeah. So to me, it, it brings up a few words, awareness. You know, I think it's important for not only the AAPI communities within ourselves to get together and 
you know, learn about other API groups. But I think as a general population in the United States, it's it's really important that others are aware of API groups. And, you know, we're just like everybody else, but we have a, an unusual and interesting cultural history and background. And for a, another word is education, you know, to educate people about those cultures, you know, the the commonalities rather than the differences amongst yeah. all of us. Community, you know, again, just getting back to the community of of within those those groups to, you know, it's amazing as generations move on, unfortunately, some of those history cultural things kind of get lost with these sure. young kids. And so I think that's part of it too. You know, you have these programs or activities during the month and uh, and it teaches the young kids, even within their own, you know, learning about their own culture, probably, I guess one other word would be just unity, you know, amongst the community. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. What, I mean, you said that some things can get lost, but theoretically, there's more ways to learn than ever before. So months like this allow you to look at those tools more, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's interesting because with my experience here with our credit union anyway, there's a lot of non-Japanese or non-Asians that sometimes are more interested in our culture and history than some of our, sure. our kids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that happens with anybody. So you've been 38 years. How has DEI efforts changed in the workplace throughout your career? Yeah, well, I mean, just expanded, you know, tenfold. When I was first with, you know, started within the, the credit union industry, I mean, really didn't even know, you know, what that, that was. I mean, that sure. really wasn't anything that anybody really talked about. So it's been awesome, you know, now, I mean, just the awareness factor, getting back to that again. And I think that's, you know, it, it's just a, a 180 degree turnaround. I mean, it just is so different and, and much better now than, you know, what it has. So obviously, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it's, it's great to see that awareness factor. Or where is there room to improve? I don't know if you have specific ideas or just general things. You know, I'd, I'd love to see more more diversity in executive positions within okay. our industry. You know, there's obviously a few, but but I would love to see, you know, much more than what we've got now. I think probably same within the political arena. You know, I'd love to see more diversity, multicultural individuals in politics same with advocacy. You know, advocacy is always important for credit unions, where it seems like we're always fighting against that or something. Yep, yep. <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, getting more involved, you know, in, in that arena. Switching gears a little bit then, what's your credit union focused on right now? Or is there anything in particular that's taken your attention as CEO? Yeah, it, you know, technology is such a okay. huge thing now and especially I you know in the future with chat GPT and I was just art, researching that yeah <laughs> yeah all of that you know and, and and it's much more difficult for small credit unions to try to stay up with that or keep yeah. up with that. But you know we try to do our best. So right now we're really focused. We've got a new mobile app coming out. We've got new online banking we're working on bill pay, improving our bill pay. So, so those are the things that, you know, right now we're focused on and, and there's, you know, a list down the yeah. road of more technology items as, <laughs> as, as these they're always um, changing or growing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is that app like a, a 2023 thing or summer yeah. thing? Or? Yeah. We're yeah. probably in June, we'll be nice. bringing that up on live. So we're right in the midst of getting it going. So what else are you involved in outside of work? Outside of work, well, let's see. I love to golf. Yeah. So I'm a big golfer. I love to fish. I try to get out fishing as much as I can both. I didn't do any ice fishing this year, but at least try to go out ice fishing once during the winter time. Yeah. And then we've got a lot of, you know, Utah has great outdoor activities. Oh, yeah. I love to do outdoor activities. And we've got lots of streams and lakes and trails and everything to to do so so i love to do that 
family and friends, you know, I love being around the family and love getting together with friends. And that's my, probably my relaxation and outlet to do those sure. things. <laughs> yeah. Is it golf season yet there? Or? Well, it seems like everybody has, has had just an extremely heavy winter. And so, yeah, probably last week, you know, was really started to warm up. And so yesterday was actually my first outing for golf nice. for the year. <laughs> it's always an optimistic one. So I'm sure, <laughs> well, hopefully at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're hoping for no more snow. I mean, we literally, yeah. you know, I, the ski resorts here, we've got multiple ski resorts out here. And I saw a news article, oh gosh, a couple of weeks ago. And that was that was before we had this last big storm and they had over 850 inches so far for the year. Wow. It's just been, been crazy. So right now we're really here in Utah in Salt Lake. We're really worried about flooding. Okay. Yeah. Had some flooding that's, you know, running down roads and if it gets too warm too quick, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be sure. that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I'm in Wisconsin. We don't get that much snow, but there's snow on the ground right now. <laughs> It was like 80 on Saturday. So mm-hmm. entertainment, I don't know. Is there a last good movie, book, TV show that you'd read and maybe you would recommend? <laughs> I love to, to read, but my time is so limited that that's one of the things I, I think I look forward to is when I'm able to retire is to be able to read a book again. I, I love doing that, but don't have the time. But the funny, it was it's a little funny. I know it's been a, a, a craze for a while, but just recently we my wife and I gotten into these J dramas, K dramas, I don't know, Japanese dramas or oh, okay. Korean dramas. They're addicting. I get home late and so my wife will stay up and, and we'll we'll sit and watch an episode of one of these these dramas and oh yeah, all the <laughs> All the storylines, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) And I really don't, I've I've always told people that I don't like to watch series, even, you know, American TV series, because I'm a, I am a movie guy because I like to sit down, watch a beginning, middle and end and Mm -hmm. let the story finish. I don't want it to carry on and carry on. And, and so I've been hesitant to always watch these dramas because I, you know, I, I want to see an end, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they, they pull now you. They in. have the cliffhangers and yeah, they <laughs> yeah. keep you going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I guess I have to say that embarrassingly. That's uh, what I mean. <laughs> Oh, we all watch that stuff. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to share? The one last thought, it's one of the things that I've, always loved and appreciated about the credit union industry is that it doesn't matter, you know, how small you are or how large you are. We're such a community still that we are so willing to share resources, ideas, you know, just whatever you ask for, you know, and, and, and it's so awesome because my wife actually works for a bank and some of these community or large banks, you know, there's no way they're going to share some of, their practices, you know, and stuff that they do. And, and so that's, you know, really always kept me interested in credit unions and, and, you know, and especially in my position that I could call America first or Mountain America, and they'd be more than happy to share ideas and, you know, steer me towards someplace to help whatever, you know, I'm asking for. And and I love that. I love that about credit unions and in our industry that you can do that. Thanks for listening to the CUNA News Podcast. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher Radio.